Welcome to Ramble 21, everybody. Today, I want to start off with uh, kind of a controversial topic, and it's kind of been floating around in the community if you are like on Twitter at all or have been playing any leagues. Basically, there's talk of, you know, adding Bandos instances. I think it's just Bandos instances. I don't think it's all God Wars. Um, adding Bandos instances to the main game for Irons. Now, it's obviously pretty controversial. I've like read the thread. I think Kieran just either last night or this morning posted a a thread of like what I think I think what he says again, I I'd have to reread it to like quote it perfectly, but I think it was kind of like him saying Bandos instances shouldn't be added. I think that was the stance because it'll affect the economy. Um I, again, I'm actually not sure if that was a stance or not, but it was something. Basically, his it, he was asking people's thoughts. He was like, "What? What would? What do you guys think?" You know. So it wasn't just this is what I want and this is going to happen. He he gave his own insight and then he asked, you know, the community what they think. Now I have not just a, like a warning. I have not like fully thought about all the consequences of this, but. Um, I will tell a little story. So like a month ago, some guy in my Twitch stream, in my chat, had, um, asked, should uh, there be uh, instances for Bandos? And initially I thought, what the fuck? Absolutely not. Like, why w Why is that even a question? Like, yeah, it's kind of hard to find a world, but like you'll find one eventually, right? Anyway, like a couple days after that, um, after that viewer had asked that, I went to Bandos myself because I was kind of curious and I also just wanted to take a break from Nightmare and go um, just have some fun at Bandos. I kid you not, this is this might actually sound like a joke, but I hopped through every single world from 302 to like 535 and there was not one world that was free and it was like a Thursday at 11 p.m. Like every single world had at least one person inside the world and most of the time there was like five people and that was a huge issue i literally could not find a world i eventually found a world because i just sat and waited for a, um, a soloer to leave but it was a really high ping world for me and basically i ended up dying because of lag because like worlds that aren't good for me like if you're flicking bandos like they, they just go to shit yeah like it's you don't need to like you don't need a good world if you're just gonna team bandos but if you're gonna like sweat it out you actually need a good ping world and there's very select few that are like reliable anyway um that story was not to show that i'm shit at bandos but it was to show that like bandos actually really does have a problem and like you like there needs to be something done about it and i personally think the best way to go about it is to add an iron man instance now i would be completely okay if that instance cost you know 50 or 100k um per each time you want to use it you'd you'd obviously still have to get the 40 kc and then you'd have to pay you know a 50k or 100k fee to actually enter the instance and every single Every single person I've ever heard that's against having Bandos instances, they their only argument is either, well, I guess there's two arguments. Their argument is, I hate Iron Men and they chose to limit themselves, or the economy. Something about the fucking economy. Like, who? Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so really just, I don't know. Like, okay, Bandos... <laughs> Over the past year, like, has have been, like, 50 worlds been added? Like, 50, like, worlds you can hop to been added, like, the past year? I swear. Like, there's been so many worlds added. And the price of Tacits and, like, a BCP are relatively the same. And there are literally, like, worlds heavily camped by Venezuelans nonstop, 24-7. And nothing's happened. And so if your argument is is against um the economy like if it's it's all about the economy and that's like your whole argument is just say the word economy then um like iron men will be iron men instances will be the least 
like that 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 will be the least um or how do i word this that will do the least damage to the economy now if there was instances for everybody like all main accounts fucking just live at the ge let's be honest like you heavily rely on the ge and that's like how the economy is like set. that's how like prices are set like iron men occasionally drop over some dupes if they're going ham for like a pet or something but like it, okay that if if your whole argument's on the economy that should not even be a worry to you like a, f a few irons dropping over some dupes whereas like literally every world is packed non-stop with like bandos going down in like five seconds non-stop on every single world like that's it's not going to be a that big of an issue again just to clarify i have not i'm not a fucking economics expert or anything and like i please if you guys have any like i i love to listen to other people's opinions and i would love to like you know if you feel like you can change my mind please do so like i would love to hear somebody else's opinion on the matter but what i've seen so far is just like kind of like people that either hate irons and just want them to like suffer or just people like thinking that you know a couple iron man dupes coming into the main game is gonna like destroy the economy so anyway if you guys have any further thoughts on that like i would love to hear it but i personally think a band of instance would be welcome and it could cost i wouldn't say make it cost a lot but I mean, make it cost at least, you know, a, like 50 to 100K. I'd even be willing to say up to 200K. It would force irons to, like, get good and, like, extend their trips. But I am just thinking. And the other thing is, like, if there was an instance, you could choose the world. So, like, what would suck is if there was just a select few worlds where you could have an instance. And they're, like, the shittiest ping, have random-ass five-second lag spikes all the time. But if I got, like, personally, if I got to choose my Bandos world at all times, I could l literally just go into the best ping world. Oh, my God. I'd fucking love my life there. Like, I would actually be, like, super excited to go for the pet one day and just guarantee have a great ping world, no lag issues, and just, you know, not have to fight over worlds. That would be amazing. And I'd be de I would literally be willing to pay 250K every time I every time i go like in there just yoink it from my bank i'd be totally okay with that anyway those are my thoughts on bandos um the other thing i kind of wanted to touch on was the nightmare update so last week nightmare had a few changes and those changes are well the biggest change is that the nightmare pet ha has instead of it being a one in four thousand from every team size and then it would be a one in 3,800 if you were MVP with big bones. <clears throat> They've changed it. So if you're in a solo, it's a one in 800. And the MVP bonus does not matter unless it's in a five man plus. So for solos, it's one in 800. Regardless if you got MVP, obviously you would get MVP. But it's one in 800, one in 1,600 for duos, one in 2,400 for trios, and one in 3,200 for four mans. Which is really awesome, honestly. I think it's really balanced. But it encourages soloing a little bit more because now not only is it best in slot now not only is soloing if like efficient soloing best in slot for um like items but now it's also best in slot for pet i'm pretty sure it's i'm pretty sure soloing right now is like actually the best way to get the pet and the best way to get items obviously it takes a little bit more skill um, yeah, that's going to negatively affect, negatively impact the world, the like whole um, nightmare being packed issue because nightmare gets really packed. It hasn't really been an issue since leagues came out, but it's going to be a huge issue once leagues like fully dies. So, and here's something that I noticed yesterday. So yesterday I was streaming and I, my world got taken. So I was just hopping and i eventually hopped to this world where there was an alt it, it looked like there was an alt outside waiting and he was just wearing full justice sure anyway i i popped in the world because he was just waiting outside and the fight was like the actual nightmare thing was idle so i just hopped in and then he hopped in and started asking me weird questions like oh or they're not weird questions but he was like 
hey, nice account and stuff. And he was just kind of like sitting there talking. I'm like, all right, like you need to leave. He just kind of ignored it. And then I left and I was like, hey, please stay outside. I need to like start this kill solo. And he just went back in again. So it's, it's it was almost like he was pretending to be in, like, who the hell knows? I just ended up hopping because I wasn't going to deal with it. But it looked as though he understood that I had to start the kill solo and he was preventing that so that he could get his main or whoever or his team there. It looked like he was like holding the world by doing that like apparently 200 IQ tactic because I hadn't even thought of that until it happened to me directly. But apparently you can actually prevent, uh, you know, in quotations, crashing um, that nightmare by just keep entering the world when some if you're in a team nightmare i like i'm apprehensive about even telling this but i'm going to tell it anyway because i think something needs to be done regardless but basically if you are teaming at nightmare and you want to prevent a solo from crashing you just fucking keep walking into when he's trying to start the fight just keep walking in there because he's not going to start the fight if he wants the pet you being in there for a you being in there for one second after the kill starts instantly makes the pet rate go from 1 in 800 to 1 in 1600 because the only way the pet's 1 in 800 in the solo is if the fight starts with one person in there as soon as it starts with the second person or third person the pet rate's fucked so the only way it wouldn't work is if the guy already has a pet and he doesn't care like if the solo already has a pet but for me i don't i'm not like i'm not hunting the pet but i would like to at least have the best chance at the pet so somebody that's entering the world before i can like start the kill like somebody that just keeps re-entering the um fight is gonna prevent me from actually starting the fight so you know i don't know if that was like a 200 iq play by him and he just understood that i wasn't gonna start the fight and he was just gonna keep holding the world or he just actually was oblivious and just wanted to talk to me but anyway that kind of is unfortunate because um it used to be you know if people were just waiting outside sucking each other's dick you could just pop in the world and then they would like they would accuse you of crashing but like anyway that's an issue kind of and it's gonna be even more of an issue when um leagues dies like i said so i think nightmares should have either iron man instances or solo instances Personally, I think Iron Man instances would be the best because every single fucking person's argument is, oh, the economy, the economy. Like, dude, look at raids. Look at TOB. Those are fully instanced fucking fights. Look at the Tebow. The Tebow's still 1.1 bill. Like, that shit's been out for, like, three years. And, like, it's been fully instanced. And, like, Venezuelan teams are now doing chambers, like, 24-7. Like, dude, like having an instance doesn't make that big of a deal it really does not it just especially a solo instance in nightmare like there's no way that's going to affect much at all it's just going to keep people from literally nightmare is such a fucking hostile place it's it well it's not anymore because of leagues but it's going to become like extremely hostile soon like a lot of people getting fucking mad at each other a lot of people just like you know reporting people for crashing reporting people for like toxicity because it's just you're trying to find a damn world and every, every once it gets at least in my time zone once it's past noon for like the next like 10 hours it is just the most aids thing ever to find a world and you have to in quotes crash people like when they're sitting outside waiting for their entire team to come you crash them you have to do that like you actually have to because there's there's no other world, you know? So you got to find whatever is available for you. And it just pisses people off for good reason. And, like, I don't know if something needs to be done about that. So I I personally think an Iron Man instance, just bring back the fucking Iron Man portal. Why was that ever taken? Like, I understand. I think I understand why it was taken. Because Nightmare was the most unpopular thing in the entire game for, like, three months. But, like it was completely unpolled to be taken out so they really should just add that portal back for iron man that would help a lot because iron man again are the least um the the people least um affecting the economy or whatever i'm trying to say 
Because that seems to be the the only argument. The other argument is just, oh, you chose to be limited. But that's such a shitty argument, honestly. It's pretty shitty. So, yeah. Those are my two, like, rants just for today. I just, they were just on my mind. I figured I'd talk about them. Um, by the way, my last ramble was Ramble 20 when I got my Harmonized Orb. Um, that night... So last week, that night when I got my Harmonized Orb, I went to Scorpia. And Scorpia has been my, f like, literally has been the only wilderness pet I've been missing for, like, I don't even know how long. Like, a I mean, at least a year. And so I finally got my Scorpia pet. I did, like, five fucking kills with my Harmonized Staff. By the way, it's not good. It's not good to use the Harmonized Staff unless you're, like, doing teams, but... I, I, I would have been better off just using Ice Barrage and instead of Bind or whatever it is, Entangle. But I was just curious on how it did at Scorpia anyway. I got the Scorpia pet at like 5 kills in at 9... 10 KC, I want to say. Something like that. 909 KC or something. It was on my Twitter. But yeah, I finally completed the entire Wilderness pet collection. And, and I know Valor was flaming me on Twitter for posting my little court pet and my kbd pet but i consider those wilderness pets you know why because their caves are in the wilderness so i technically have every single wilderness pet and i'm really proud of myself for doing that every single one was spooned as fuck though like literally i got i got so lucky in the wilderness it's like stupid um like look at this i'll just show you quickly okay Callisto. First of all, I've had two pets under rate. These are not accurate because I did a lot of these before the collection log was out. Um, Chaos Elemental. This I went past this to try to get a D pick, but I got my pet at one twenty three. Um, let's see. These are all completed. I've already completed the shields. Okay, well, where's the actual bosses? Um, KBD. I literally got a visage there as well and uh black dragon or the prince black dragon let's see am i missing something or scorpia so here's scorpia 909 that was a i didn't even go for the back to back venonatus two pets i got my first one at like 1269 i want to say vedian 476 fucking spooned i even have the ring as well i think that's it oh and corp yeah, two spectrals, but I got the pet at like 210 or 208 or something. So pretty spoon fed with pets in the wilderness. But so the cool thing is, is that the only thing I'm missing now uh, from the wilderness is full Dagenhai and the Chaos Druid, the Chaos Elder Chaos Druid robe hood or Elder Chaos Druid hood. Or whatever it is, the hood part of the set. I have four robe bottoms and four robe tops, and I haven't gotten the hood yet. So that's the literally the last thing I'm missing in the wilderness is that hood and then full Dagon High. And I've opened like 115 Lauren's chests, I want to say. So I think each piece is like, you should expect a piece like every 85 chests or something. So anyway, I'll eventually complete that. And then every single other thing in the wilderness has been accomplished, like shields, eternal glory, rev weapons. Um, everything will have been completed except for that Dagon High set and that hood. So I'll eventually get that. Um, but yeah. I just, you know what's funny? So uh, I actually started making this ramble earlier, but I decided that it would be a good idea to do a nightmare kill while I rambled and I ended up dying <laughs> the, during the nightmare kill as I started the ramble and I was just like all right I'm just fucking scrap this whole thing I'm just sick of this anyway and then I'm just I'm just crafting some wrath runes um I also had an idea on Twitter I, I don't know who actually is active on my Twitter but if you're not exclamation oh wait no that's that's for my twitch chat um click down below in my description you can click on my Twitter Recently passed a thousand 
uh, Twitter followers. And we're also so fucking close to a thousand YouTube subs. So if you guys haven't subbed yet, try or just be be in the three digit gang. Come on, guys, be in the three digit gang. Or if it's already past a thousand, be in the four digit gang. That's cool too, kind of. But yeah, thank you guys for following my shit ass channel. But yeah. I'm actually going to get, I think you get, I don't know what it is. It's like YouTube partnership or something after a thousand. I don't know if it's called partnership or just something, but I can actually be monetized, which is, you know, that'll be an extra like $3 a month, which is nice. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm really happy that it's looking likely I'll get a thousand subs by the end of this year, obviously. Well, I don't want to like fucking jinx it, but I'm pretty sure like within the next week I'll have a thousand subs, but pretty awesome because I didn't actually start getting active on YouTube until like this February. So thank you guys. But, uh, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. My, my Twitter, uh, post, I had posted something about, uh, winter. T what was that again? Oh yeah. I wanted dragon axes to be traded into the winter Todd lady. Or man or whatever man lady outside of Wintertop where you can turn them in for burn pages I was like what if you could turn in a dragon axe for 250 burn pages I said 250 because I had to like I had to say a higher amount that I actually like thought was fair just so that like we would bargain a, lo a lower amount but it, that would still be higher than what I'd actually want so like I would think a hundred's fair people are like Oh, the dragon axe is only 37k and the burnt pages is 3k. It's like I wonder why because like there's literally no use for a dragon axe. It's like besides if you're going to be like a 200 mil wood chopper and you're going to be using dragon axe like a lot of people use crystal axes now, but if you're going to be using a dragon axe or an infernal axe, that's the only way that that thing's leaving the game. So why not make dragon axes great again? And like, yeah, burnt pages would drop in price, but like, you know, or do burnt pages need to be 3k each? I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, my, my idea was I initially said 250 pages for a dragon axe. I think a hundred would be completely fair as well. I just said 250, but like, I mean, think about it. Winter Todd gives dragon axes. Why can't, you know, DKs be made great again as well? Like. I mean, I guess DKs already are pretty good profit and you get bones, but like think of like the dragon axes that people don't use. This could be turned into burnt pages, you know. Anyway, I'm just uh I just want that to happen now that I have a harmonized orb. But like I don't know. Somebody I think it was Eagles Shed and he showed me like he he told me that he only got or only, but he got twenty thousand burnt pages soloing winter Todd to 200 mil two or 20,000 burnt pages. So that's only 400,000 charges. So the fact that like you're kind of capped at 400,000 harm orb charges, I guess you're not capped at it. I mean, you could do winter Todd post 200 mil, but that's a fucking yikes. But like if you could turn in dragon axes as well, like, I don't know, it kind of, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? Post in the comments. Do you think that's a good idea to have dragon axes trade in for burnt pages? And don't be like one of those people like, oh, the prices have already been decided by the Jagex gods. Like, these prices must always be the prices that are always, you know, like, I don't understand that argument where it's like, oh, the this is already this price. This, you know, you know what that kind of thinking does? It does what happened in chambers like when they released chambers they based all the herb drops off of what their fucking prices were so instead of making like you know dwarf dwarf weeds rare like they've always been they said oh dwarf weeds are kind of cheap because yeah there's only one fucking reason for them which is ranging pots they're like oh they're pretty cheap so instead of giving a minimal amount of them because you know they're a high level herb let's just fucking shit them out because let's base it off their ge value that's literally the reason why you get like a thousand fucking irits and a thousand dwarf weeds out of chambers, but you only get like 20 Renards and 20 Snapdragons. That's literally the reason why those things keep being more expensive and the other potions keep being really cheap because they base everything on GE value. It's like, it's like you're, 
like again i'm not an economics expert but that's pretty stupid to like they're trying to like i don't understand it like they're like why are dwarf weeds so cheap like we gotta like like why are dwarf weeds so cheap why are renars so like expensive it's because everything like the drop rates are based off what the current ge value is instead of like what it should be where oh these are high level herbs let's not give them out like fucking candy but when you give them out like candy they get even cheaper and then they get even cheaper and then they get even cheaper and then you keep saying oh well there's got to be more to balance out the price because like you know like it makes no fucking sense Anyway, I'm not attached to items having prices, which is, you know, part of it. Thank God I'm an Iron Man. I don't have to worry about fucking prices dropping or rising. I genuinely don't give a shit that this staff is. Honestly, this staff in my eyes, nothing has a GE value. But if it did, this staff in my eyes would only be worth like, I don't know, 100 mil. Like, I don't care. Like, it's good and all. But for like me, the, the amount of upkeep I have to do for the staff is like ridiculous. So, but you know what's funny is that a crossbow in my eyes is worth a fucking bill. Crossbow is fucking amazing. But to other people, that thing is only worth like 10 mil. Actually, I think the price is rising because of revs. I'm actually curious. Let's look. Price crossbow you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, that dropped big time. I thought it rose. What? Why is that so cheap? I literally, I could have sworn it was at 16 mil, like, the last time I checked. I don't, pff, God, I would hate to be a main, have to deal with that. I don't know what happened, but when the crossbow first came out, it was, like, 450 mil. And that, it, it's still, to this day, in my eyes, the crossbow is still worth that much, 450 mil. Like, even higher, honestly, but. Yep. Um, speaking of revs though, they did a great job, uh, with the rev update. I think it's great. I think the weapons are extremely rare. Like they might be a little bit too rare, but that's better than them just being shot out. I think revs is, I don't know. I think they did a really fucking good job with singles plus. Like, I don't know. I don't really have any complaints. I have a video on my channel of me doing three hours of rev dragon and i made over two mil an hour every single hour like on average and i didn't get any uniques i think that's really fucking balanced like i the reason i think it's balanced is because you know you might be like oh vorkath gives more money like yeah but vorkath also doesn't sh give you know a 16 mil relic occasionally and it doesn't give a best in slot like two best in slot wilderness weapons you know so being two mil an hour with the chance of like great drops is great i think it's awesome i also wasn't scold and they've also reduced the amount that scolding does for the drop rates which i think is great i think that's totally fair i think it's like one in twenty two thousand. I think it's one in twenty-two thousand at the Dragon or Knight for a crossbow skull, and then it's one in forty thousand. So it's less than even half now. It used to be one in fourteen thousand for the crossbow skull, and then one in forty thousand unskulled, which was close to three times. Anyway, I think they did a great job. Uh, they have also last week they made it so the Amulet of Avarice now works in the Wooly Slayer Cave. Which is fine because initially it like the amulet of avarice was always this any any monster that drops an item it'll be noted if you're wearing the amulet of avarice and it used to work in the rev caves but in the rev caves there was other monsters in it then they made it so the rev caves only had revs in it and then they made an additional cave anyway so that additional cave the the wilderness slayer cave now the amulet of avarice works in which is cool but the only use for it literally the only use for it is for like somebody that hasn't completed the will the elite and is doing green dragons or black dragons but it's like it's such a fucking niche item it's really it would be better if you if that whole cave wasn't multi but the fact that it's multi and you can just be like you know you can just have a team on you and they mace you or whatever like 
it makes it very fucking risky for like irons or anything to like use for example if you wanted to use a crossbow with the amulet of avarice the fact that the entire cave's multi and even the exits lead to multi fucking so stupid honestly i asked ash like could you please make it so you can actually like have a chance of escaping that cave it's a fucking like wildy slayer cave like jesus christ you got to give the pvmer a chance like literally i went there my first trip there i was doing greater demons some dude just ran in tele blocked me instantly like because i'm not staring at my mini map for fucking white dots anyway i got tele blocked instantly and there was a team of four so i tried to run to the exit kept getting fucking frozen kept getting fucking frozen kept getting fire surged over and over just trying to fucking eat my way and then even when i left the cave i realized oh i'm still in multi oh yep and i gotta run another fucking like 30 seconds without being frozen to get to singles like god like that's what revs is supposed to be not fucking wilderness but i would just love that cave to be singles pluses or my idea was that the rooms in the slayer cave here, i'm just gonna show you just give you a little glimpse of what i'm actually talking about for those that don't know so look here's the new wilderness slayer cave there's two exits this is this is the corp cave by the way this so it's just this there's an exit up here which leads to venonatus then you have to run over here to get to singles like all of this is fucking multi you have to run out here and then go over there and then this leads to multi as well so you use the obelisk 19 to run to here greater demons are right here so i was right here um some guy ran in insta tele blocked me and then his team was right there just kept freezing me i was trying to run out and then i ended up here and i was like okay i'm still in multi i'm fucking dead anyway amulet of avarice works but it's only for it's really only good for black dragons and green dragons which is already stupid because the green dragons here have 100 hp whereas their counterparts outside of the outside of this cave have only 75 hp and these have more defense and everything which is just stupid but i don't know i guess if you don't have wilderness elite done you get noted bones and hides black dragons is kind of cool because they drop elite clues which is only niche for me literally one player in the entire community cares about that but again i'm not going to be using a crossbow scold and multi fuck that um anyway my whole idea the reason i brought this up is the rooms are everything in this cave is multi i think it would be a great idea if the, the rooms were multi and then the tunnels like the actual tunnels were singles so teams still could get a kill you know just for tele block the guy and freeze him while he's in multi and then kill him while he's in multi like that can easily be done but the fact that every single thing is multi and you're just gonna die regardless if you get tele blocked you're dead like you just are there's nothing you can do about it because you're in multi like if they have three people or more you're dead so i think the tunnel should be singles um it still gives a chance of a team to kill you but as if you're good enough and you can get into the tunnels like you'll most likely be safe you know you're still going to get attacked by one person but anyway that's my that's what i think should happen or at least the exit should lead to singles which i don't think will happen but anyway I gotta get some water. Mouth's pasty. Shit. Um, yeah, kind of a lot of rants today. But just guess my thoughts on what should happen. Um Ooh. I have I've I I've probably already mentioned this in previous rambles and I've always I've always been a fan of giving things clue scrolls. I I'm just a fan of like making dead content, stuff that like came out years and years ago that was probably balanced for the time. I think they should get little updates to make it at least sort of worth doing. So like um I spent a little bit of time last week in Dorgishan and i think like i've mentioned it to caveman only you guys know caveman only he's he does these weird content um i think it's weird content wednesdays where he just does really unique things that like nobody else would really think of doing he ran around dorgashan like he does it occasionally he'll run around dorgashan making doing fire making 
through the Dorgish and Light Orbs. And I, it was really fucking interesting to me because right now the meta for Irons is to, you know, blow glass into these Light Orbs past 87 crafting. And then they have zero use because uh, Goblin Wire is just obnoxiously slow to get. And then even if you attach the wire, then at that point there's nothing like there's nothing useful about those lit orbs, you know. Anyway, I it's not really worth my time, but I still am always curious on like what dead methods could be made you know, could be revived. Anyway, I might even make a video of it eventually, but I think it would be really cool. Shit. I think it would be really cool to balance out um, the Dorgishan method and actually make it worth it. So right now, eat some food. Eh, fuck it. I'll just fucking go to my house real quick. Um, I was trying to say so I think it would be really cool is if cave goblin wire actually had a use and like blowing those light orbs has a, a, a further use than just making orbs and then that's it they're in your bank forever so I want to do efficient runs of getting cave goblin wire and then I also want to do like efficient runs on running around the entire city so apparently I think caveman only said there's like seven broken lamps or six like six or seven broken lamps at all times and every time you fix a lamp that one breaks randomly like one in the city breaks every time you fix one one breaks so there's always six or seven broken lamps i think it's six or seven um so basically you just keep running around the village and you can have like a rune light setting that shows you what lamps are broken and you just run around the place fixing lamps. But right now they only give a thousand fire making XP. What would be awesome is if they actually not only gave fire making XP, but also gave crafting XP or even potentially construction XP. For, I would say crafting. Like I just said construction as just an idea. But I think instead of giving just a thousand fire making XP, I think it would be awesome if they gave, you know, maybe a thousand fire making XP and you know 400 or 500 crafting xp with every lamp fixed something that's like okay this is a new way to train crafting um the thing is is that cave goblin wire is really slow to get there's i'll make a video on this if you guys don't if you guys are actually super confused at what i'm talking about but if you're an iron man you probably know a little bit of what i'm talking about there's a there's a little machine under dorgishan that um that uh, produces cave goblin wire and then you can thieve it for 22 thieving xp and then those goblin wires are attached to the light orbs and you can do it instantly like you just spam your inventory for two seconds and then all 14 are made and it's a really cool like little niche way of training crafting but it's just not efficient at all but it would be really cool if i could find out calculations of like what the fastest ways of obtaining all this material is and then what the fastest way of running around the city fixing lamps is, and then make a balanced training method around it where it could actually be, you know, kind of a meta to go to Dorgishan and run around the city fixing lamps. I think that would be fucking awesome. Like a super OG training method that nobody ever uses. They might have used for fire making before Winter Todd was ever a thing, but like a, just a new method that actually revive some old content and i also think um what would be really cool is if the dorgishan light orbs um like this is just an idea i was thinking what if the dorgishan light or the sorry the dorgishan tellies um so you can make these little dorgishan spheres which tell you there but they teleport you to a random spot in the city i've noticed in leagues i don't play it but i've noticed there's these there's this relic called last recall and you can like choose the spot where you want to like teleport to so you can just literally just save a spot and then you can just keep telling back there over and over i think it'd be really cool as if maybe with the like lumbridge elite diary i think that place is in under lumbridge i think that's considered lumbridge but it would be really cool as if like the lumbridge elite diary made those spheres act as a last recall so like 
instead of being teleported randomly throughout the city, you could choose a tile and it could it could be right next to the dispenser of the cave goblin wire. Something like that where it's like, I want this tile to be my last recall when I use the sphere. And so collecting cave goblin wire could actually be even more efficient by like just instantly telling there whenever you use an orb. These are the orbs I'm talking about, by the way. So like if I used it, it would teleport me randomly. Anyway, and then just to give, you know, some people that don't have any clue what I'm talking about. They, these are cave goblin wires and these are the light orbs that you blow with glass. So every time I blow glass, I make these. That's why I have a fuck ton of them. And then I'll show you what these do. So that's like the training method. You can get like, you can just go as fast as you fucking want and make these orbs. And then these orbs are right here. And then these are used for fixing the lamps. And every lamp you fix in Dorgishin gives a thousand fire making XP. Anyway, I've always can, been kind of thinking of like testing out stuff and finding out numbers. But again, like it would... Is it worth my time? Like, I just feel like Jagex doesn't give a shit. Unless, like, people are really about it. Which, again, I feel like I'm the only player that's, like, really weird like this. And likes things like this. So, it wouldn't be popular at all. But, um... Oh, I got invited to... Speaking of getting Jagex to want me to do these ideas. I actually got invited to the, um... Jagex content creators discord which is pretty cool because there's just a bunch of like the biggest streamers and youtubers in there and we like talk about things and it's kind of cool to like be a part of it like it was cool to be invited like I'm really I was really honored to be invited to it because I feel like that means I I feel like they feel like I can con I can contribute something to like RuneScape anyway so that was pretty awesome um, and I just feel like closer, like, I, I don't know. I just feel wanted, I guess, like my ideas and stuff. So again, that does, I was not invited so that my fucking clue scroll ideas will come into the game and shit like that. But like, it's still cool being like a little bit more received, you know, like if I had an idea, I, it's not like I'm just some random player at this point. It's like, Oh, make this like I, you know, I can actually have a little bit more of a say, which is kind of cool. Again, I'm not that doesn't mean I'm gonna my ideas are not coming to the game at all it just means I can like I have a little bit more influence I guess which is cool but yeah I think that would be a cool little thing I'm really curious um whenever the November what about what is that thing called uh Gilinor Gazette uh I think the last Q&A Kieran said that they have an idea that they want to discuss with the community around how to get blood runes. I'm really curious on what they've decided for that. I don't know if that already came out or it's coming out soon. But yeah, I'm really curious on that because I had a video. I have a video in my section somewhere talking about my idea for blood rune crafting. And it was basically just traditional blood rune crafting through... Um, like the abyss but you could also do it through the uh through the mauritania tunnels down there like there would be another way and then the stained my stained essence idea was one of them i wonder if they got anything of that or it's just some they didn't give a shit because i know uh mod husky and mod uh arcane had watched the video so i wonder if i gave them any sort of idea probably not but we'll see we'll see what their whole idea is what their proposal is But yeah, um, I'm trying to think what else I was going to say. It's pretty much it, honestly. There was something else I was going to say, but I'm not going to spend five minutes trying to think of what it was. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little ramble. Uh, damn, almost 45 minutes. I did not know I was talking that long. Uh, maybe not little ramble kind of a bigger one but hope you guys enjoyed this one and again if you guys have any like topics for me to discuss on or anything or share my thoughts on certain things I 
almost always reply to like I don't always almost always reply to them but I always read every YouTube comment and if it's something I like care to respond to I definitely will but I do read all of your guys's comments and so yeah if you guys ever want me to talk about something in a ramble you can just put that in there but um I will be live tomorrow for more nightmare um I've been really suffering I'm, I don't I really don't like talking about like my fucking issues like I really don't I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that like I I complain a lot but I don't like talking about my IRL issues because I just feel like it's like nobody cares like, like nobody cares you know like like if I talked about it nobody fucking cares just shut up about it but I've been suffering with a lot of allergies and I've had um like just briefly like I'm having eye irritations and so I need to go to the eye doctor and like get a new uh, first of all, I need to get a new prescription. Then I need to get a new pair of glasses and actual, I might need to actually just get a new brand of contacts with a new brand of solution perhaps because, um, I think I have allergies to either my contacts or my solution and it's been like really bad. And I think that's the reason I've been like having really bad allergies over the past year is because of this that past like year and a half even because I've been suffering with allergies, but um, I've kind of cleared out every issue, like every avenue that it could have been. I feel like it's kind of like clear it's not that. And I think the final turn is that it might be my contacts. So anyway, I've been waking up like horrible eye mucus and stuff. And it's just doesn't put me in a good place to like stream that morning. So I do apologize, but I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully. And yep, we'll do some more Nightmare. I was going to do one this for this ramble, like I said, but I ended up dying. And then I just scratched the ramble, but yeah, or scrapped it. But yeah, enough talking. Have a good day, guys. And I will see you tomorrow. And thanks for a 1,000 Twitter followers. And hopefully, before the next ramble, we'll have a 1,000 YouTube subs. So see you then, guys. Peace.